Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. My name is Ed Gamble. I'm the host of the Taskmaster podcast. I suppose you know that already. I'm assuming you've listened to the Taskmaster podcast before, just as I'm assuming that you've watched Taskmaster before, because this is an episode discussing the final Taskmaster episode of series 11. Yes, it's the final. How exciting. Always exciting to have a final. Always lovely to wave goodbye to a brilliant cast who've bonded and become friends across this 10 weeks. Uh, What a wonderful series it's been. Very excited today to chat about that episode. It was a really, really good episode. Again, it's been a brilliant series. Also, lots of fun to chat to the winner of Taskmaster on this episode. Also, the Taskmaster's assistant, Alex Horn. We're going to chat to Alex first about the episode, and then we're going to chat to the brilliant drum roll. If you've not watched the episode, do not listen to this. Big spoiler coming up. Sarah Kendall, the winner of Taskmaster Series 11. We're going to be chatting to both of them. Uh, very excited to do so. Uh, I've really enjoyed this series. Um, I mean, we're just going to crack on with it, really. There's not much to say. Uh, go back and watch all the episodes of Taskmaster on all four. They're available there, as are the Bleeps versions, also available on all four. Go and check out the Taskmaster YouTube for extra content, things you might have missed. If you're already annoyed that the series is over, if you're sad, if you're missing it, there may well be some extra clips that you've not seen on youtube.com forward slash Taskmaster. Go to the Taskmaster store, check it out, buy some bits. But if you are missing Taskmaster, remember the Taskmaster podcast is here for you. We will be back next week. More details on that coming up after two brilliant interviews, Alex Horn and Sarah Kendall. Alex Horn, the Taskmaster's assistant. Welcome back to the Taskmaster podcast. Mm. Thank you, Ed. Why you seem slightly reticent? Why? Why the little? Hmm. I, I didn't enjoy your very first Alex. If I'm completely honest, Ed, what? felt a bit harsh. A bit harsh. It's quite a harsh bit... sounding name, though, isn't it, Alex? No, it's, it's soft. It's a lovely sounding name, Alex. Well, if you say it like that, but Alex, it's got l and it's got x. It's up to you how you say it, Ed. Okay. You chose to not say it like that. Sorry to start like this. You're an Alexander, are you? Yes, please. Alexander James Jeffrey. Alexander James Jeffrey Horn. Little Horn. Do you want to try spelling Jeffrey? Oh, yeah. This this is good. Um, is it? Well, Alexander James Jeffrey. Are you going to go with the double, the double J? That seems a bit fancy. So is it a G, is it a G is it G E O? You don't know Hugh and Sheila. Hugh and Sheila are quite fancy. Right, so they they went with they went with double J. But it doesn't stop there. Now carry on spelling Jeffrey. (laughs) (laughs) So you want me to spell the Jeffrey with so J E F F R E Y? No, no, no. You got no letters right except for the J. Hang on. No, you did. You got them all I, right, so but you J- got two in the wrong I. way around. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's Joffre. No, it's J E double F E R Y. It's Jeffery in the end. Jeffery. <laughs> and I spelt it wrong in all my GCSEs. Well, no, you spelt it right. Your parents spelt it wrong on your birth certificate yeah. because Jeffery is not how it's spelt. Alexander James Jeffery Horn. Alex under James Jeffery Horn. I love it. I'm just going to call you Jeffery from now on. So welcome to the Taskmaster podcast, Jeffery Horn. It's been a while since you've been in these in these parts, Jeffery, but it's lovely mm-hmm. it's lovely to have you back. Um have have you enjoyed um seeing people's reaction to series 11? Uh yes, I have, very much so. Uh, and I'm sorry I've not done any bonus fact finders. That's okay. Um a couple of people asked for them. I'm very happy to mm. come back if that's what people want. But I don't know if that's a big if, because when I say a couple of people asked for them back, it was literally a couple of people. So that's the majority. <laughs> the majority haven't clamoured for it. But I've been enjoying the podcast. And yes, I've enjoyed... I think it's been a really lovely series for people's reactions. I think they've increasingly warmed to all five. Definitely. I think... I, I guess... This isn't meant to sound at all negative. It was more of a slow burner than the previous series. Is that fair enough? Do you think in in your? I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure. I think people were quite excited 
It was, uh, people were very excited initially at the announcement. I think people were very excited that Lee was doing it. Uh, and then people have loved Lee. But then also, I think it's been a really good series for people discovering new mm. people and getting very, very excited about them. And I think everyone's yes. everyone's had a really, really good few moments on the series. Absolutely. I guess I meant all five are quieter than all five of the previous series on that first. When you have Daisy May Cooper and Johnny Vegas hitting the ground squawking. Yes. It's slightly different to this this five, but I've really enjoyed, yeah, all five of them. And I, I agree. I, I, I mean, obviously, the elephant in the room is Wozniak. Yes. Um, but I think all he, he's taken a, a lot of the heat, but all five of them, as you say, have really embedded themselves in people's brains. Exactly, and all for and all for different reasons as well. Um, obviously, yeah. The what? Look, you can't get away from the fact Wozniak dislodged a hemorrhoid on television. So. No, you that's know. happened. That yeah, that. I mean, I'm thinking. It, I was thinking about it this morning. That it's, I think that's quite educational, but in, in anyone else's asshole, it wouldn't be. Um, <laughs> but because he's as because he's Mike, it, I think you wouldn't mind watching that with your kids and explaining what a hemorrhoid is. And yeah, well, because, uh, because he's a qualified doctor as well, and he just sort of very calmly and straightly delivered it and let everyone know that he dislodged a hemorrhoid. Yes. If it was me. For example, well, for a start, I would have said it when we were filming. I probably would have pulled my trousers and pants down and tried to show it to the crew. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got to get it on camera. I can see your point. Um, can I tell you something that happened that we haven't broadcast from that series? Please. Um, a confession from Mike. He's not a qualified doctor. That's a rumour he started <laughs> spreading <laughs> on the comedy circuit. Right. But he's not. He's He left school at 15. And um, and all he's done is built up to this hemorrhoid moment. So he has learned a lot. He read a lot of books about uh, medicine, but he's not a yes. doctor. Yes. Well, that's incredible because, I mean, I've been friends with him for many years. I'm sure we've had multiple conversations where I've referenced him being a oh, it's a, doctor. It's and an he's never, he's lie. never, never cor- corrected me at all. No, I mean, he's got, he has got the qualifications, but they're all forgeries. And he's got the patients and they're all um, stooges. So yeah, if you meet anyone who's see now saying, I don't know now I don't know if you're telling the truth or not. No, nor do I. Well, I don't either. <laughs> Any other bonus facts that you want to give us about the series as a whole before we uh, we move on to this final episode? Um, I don't know about bonus facts, but I think uh, by the time anyone hears this, they know who has been crowned victor, don't they? Yes, absolutely. They'd be very silly if they were listening to this without without knowing that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a close run thing up until the very end, but I'm glad yeah. it I'm glad it did tighten up. But um, it, it was, yeah, for a while. I mean, Sarah built up such a lead, but we didn't see it coming. I guess that's my bonus fact. Is it us on the production? We never know, we never know before studio who's going to win. Yeah, because we don't. It's quite boring to tot it up, and also we don't know how Greg's going to judge things, and also we don't know who's going to win the studio tasks. So I don't quite know how she did it. Well, she um, she won three out of the first four episodes, which feels like it feels like no one's done that before. Won that many she's episodes a, that early? She's a quality player. She really is. She really is. I mean, obviously in series eight, Lou had a bit of a runaway victory. But no one really looked like they were going to catch up to her, did they? Uh, so it all, uh, this got the, pretty nail biting. Yeah, I would have gone with with, but you can have catch up to her. But I just think it would sound more natural with 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 there. No, I think too. Uh, you yeah, know, I know that's why you went for it. But I'm Mate, just you, saying... your parents can't even spell Jeffrey, so let's <laughs> let's leave language alone for now. Prize task, final prize task of the series. Hmm. Let's do it. I think that this is a this is a great prize task category. Oh, There's and a, it was a big moment, and I knew this was coming for the whole series. Yes, but this is a very unusual moment because Greg didn't know what was coming. But let's do we start with Sarah then? The, the well, let's let's start with leader. Sarah. It's it's uh, it's the prize task is a thing that will make you look tough. Occasionally, a prize task pops up, and I'm jealous of it. Um, and this this is one of those. Uh, let's let's start with Sarah. She's the current leader in the series. All the pressures on her to keep up the lead, and first thing, she pulls out the back pocket, 
is um, something she's bought from a camping shop. Little nerdy backpack. Yeah, and as sort of, I guess I am a sort of producer on the show, so I'm hoping Sarah doesn't get five points here because yeah. she'll, she'll have run away with the episode already. Yeah. But we can't, Greg won't listen to it. If I say that to him, mark Sarah down, <laughs> he will mark Sarah up. So I can't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> but I was very relieved that he didn't think that, because that doesn't make you look tough. A tough person wouldn't have a survival kit, wouldn't need a survival kit. No, that's a prepared person, right? That's uh, and I would never say they they were tough as such. No, that's um, you or me, really, isn't it? Yeah, we'd we'd have this backpack. Um, I uh, I I know what you mean though, because you could I could see a world where Greg gives that five points because so if someone sells it to him properly and says mm. being truly tough is being prepared for the worst, <laughs> you know oh, yeah. that he he might go. Oh, that's a really good point, actually. And she's got all that hair. Yeah. Which I think that does win him over sometimes. I mean, he, I th- unexpected things can persuade him. Just sort of the shoes someone's wearing. Really? Yeah, he's 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 flighty, Greg. Fickle. Oh, so fickle. <laughs> um, no, he does. He does. He does listen to logic. But you're right. He does. He he is persuaded by a good argument. Um, yeah. And uh, I will hint at something that somebody in a forthcoming series, the next series has better arguments than anyone we've had so far. But well, let's talk about that later, Ed. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, by this point, we all know who's in the next series, and we've all got, we're have got we all guessing the same person, so we can, okay. we can talk okay. about that later. Right. Okay. Um, so not a great start from Sarah. Uh, no. Lee Mack, not a great start from him either, I think. Uh, he's brought in a coat hanger. Mm. Um, here's, what, here's what I want to know in connection with all of these. When do you decide what order the prize tasks come in? How did you know that this was going to be the final prize task before people said what they were going to bring in, or was it based on what Mike was going to do that you decided you had to make it the final prize task? So this is a rare exception that we found out what all five of them wanted to do, and Mike's did uh, dictate where it went in the series. But I think we, yeah, to answer your question. We do know what people have brought in before we decide where they go in the series in general. So we try to make sure we launch with something that we know everyone's going to have a strong hand to play, or at least a strong thing to say, so you're in. Yeah. Um, but who knows? You, you know, We try to make sure everyone's always got something to say and that they're all good. Uh, but equally, it's interesting you say that, because you know, I'm not here to pick bones, but um, I would say my f- first prize task and my final prize task were both probably two of my most underwhelming mm. because yeah, well, my, i had to end the whole series on a long piece of spaghetti <laughs> yeah but i well i'm not saying that a bad thing is a bad thing though sometimes a bad thing is a good thing for the program i know you pro- think that well i do think that but i'm talking about myself yes but i'm not talking about yourself i'm talking about the my program <laughs> yes this Greg is this is the have... distinction this is the distinction i'm i struggle to make sometimes mm. is that um what's good for the program isn't always what makes me happy no, but that sentence is the opposite for me. Right, okay, good. I'm glad we yeah. got that ironed out. Yeah. Um, no, it's true. I mean, Greg always says his worst tasks are when all five of you have done something really good. Yes. Because he doesn't know what to do there. He doesn't know where to go. And he always goes, well, I don't know. I'm not going to be funny. <laughs> so a long piece of spaghetti is he would do that chef's kiss gesture. At yeah. That. And yeah. he's good at that gesture. He is good at that. Um so this is, you know, so it ended up that Lee's final prize task of the series was bringing in a coat hanger, which mm. is an absolutely awful, an awful thing. I mean, I got, I, I like that he was trying to do something different by saying, saying he knew someone near him who put a coat hanger on his head and he wasn't being marked. <laughs> yeah, but as you say, he didn't know it was going to be his climax to the series. So no, un- unlucky there for Lee. Very unlucky. Uh, it was, it was two, po- it was two points for Lee. Uh, yes. sadly. Um, Let's talk about Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah, in another episode, she could have come second or first with her leather cap, I think. I thought that would appeal to Greg quite a lot, because it's sort of retro and silly. Yeah, and hard to make Charlotte Ritchie look tough, I think. Uphill struggle there. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Given the reputation she's built across the series, that well, I say that she's built, that Greg has forced upon her across the last uh, 10 episodes of being a children's TV presenter. Which she reluctantly accepted. Yeah. I really like. <laughs> she Charlotte. really was just. She's so funny, and she really was just pushed into a corner with that. And then just watching her be exasperated every time it comes up because she knows what she's said that's coming yeah. up. Just going like, oh god. Okay. She couldn't deny the evidence. It, it, no, Greg wasn't manufacturing that. Um, but that's where the leather cap was lovely because I mean she could have come joint second there, but when somebody has brought in a baseball bat with a nail through it, 
perfect. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, Jamali, that sums Jamali up pretty well, I think. Just like straight to the point. <laughs> no yeah. messing around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's true. If you meet Jamali with that or Charlotte Rich with a leather cap, yeah, there's only one winner. And actually thinking about it, if I met Jamali with a baseball bat with a nail in it and then he put the leather cap on, I'd be less scared. Yes. Is it fewer? So if anything, fewer scared? I think it's fewer. Mm. I never oh, I'd I'd be never f- know. I never know. I'd be fewer scared. <laughs> That's it. I'd be fewer scared if Jamali had the leather cap on. Mm. Yeah, that I think actually... Right. Yeah, the, the the leather cap actually sort of takes gives people fewer scare. Um, just perfect from Jamali. I think that just yeah sums up his entire uh, his entire journey on Taskmaster, stamping on things and then bringing yeah. in a bat with a nail in it. Idea solid, solid throughout. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that that you know that looked like it was going to win until uh, Mike popped off his big crown. So big... did you know it was coming? No. So did you think what a silly hat? Yes, I thought, what a silly hat, and why has he done this? But then also, like, I thought maybe he's just chosen to do something silly for the last episode, and, like, something faux arrogant, like wearing a crown, because he, he was like, I'm definitely going to win. Mm. Um, what he'd also done is worn the same outfit throughout, throughout both series and studio. Yes. Which no one has done before. I didn't even notice that. That's classic Mike, isn't it? You... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wore the same thing in every every second he was on Taskmaster, except yeah. for that hat. Yeah. So that's that was sort of oh, at last. Doesn't it, did Joe Wilkinson not do that? I don't know. But that, I think look, he wore a different suit. Let's. You know, you give me know, some authority. Alex, mm. that this podcast we can't go around swinging around facts like no one's ever done that before. The people who listen to this will get in contact. They'll be able to let us know. And I think there's a chance that Joe Wilkinson might have worn the same thing, especially as he told us on this podcast he's only he's only got one suit. Has anyone got in touch yet to tell, to tell us we're wrong? No, that's true. Nothing, well, nothing's go. come through yet. There we yeah. go. So we must must be, must right. be right. So then Mike popped off popped off his crown uh, and underneath had a, a punk, punky haircut. It was a punk haircut, like from a, the 70s. A punk rock haircut, like from a postcard. <laughs> um, yeah, and it suited him? Yeah, sort well, everything, suit, everything suits him, sort of. It just looked like another big moustache on his head, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, afterwards... We all sort of had a socially distanced goodbye to each other. We weren't allowed mm. a rap party. Yeah. But there was a lot of lusting after Wozniak from everyone in the crew, not just the women, obviously, just everyone. Yeah. He looked, I thought he looked incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, annoying, God. isn't it? Oh, God. It is annoying, that guy. I mean, that's <sighs> the main, most of the emails we get are saying Mike Wozniak's fit. Yeah. Um, so going down that, that road again. I mean, it is going to kick off when this goes out. Obviously, we're recording this before it goes out. Yeah. I can't wait to see the reaction. Oh, people are going to go mad because I think there was a lot of people had heard there was a moment, mm. right? And I think a lot of that, a lot of the discussion was around the moment that happened in episode six. Yeah. So I think people now think the Wozniak moment has happened. But I think I don't think this will ecl- this won't eclipse the other moment, but it will top it. It will be a lovely cherry. Well, it's a lovely haircut on top of the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it's a cherry on the hemorrhoid. It's a cherry on the hemorrhoid. <laughs> um. Yeah, he looked amazing. Um, I don't think um, uh, if I saw Mike wearing a hat, that hat, I would go, why are you wearing that hat? I just think, oh, Mike's, wearing, Mike's yeah. got a hat on. Mike's are doing we, one of his things. Are we acknowledging that your phone went ding? No, I, I don't think we are. I'm pretty annoyed about it, to be honest, because yeah. I can't work out how to, because my messages are on my computer, but I can't work out right. how to make them be quiet. But I'm ju- I think it is worth acknowledging, just so we're absolutely clear which of us dinged. That it's not you who dinged, right? No, okay. because we were told to not ding. Uh, it was a message mm. coming through saying that Joe Wilkinson wore the same suit um, for the tasks and for the studio. So, <laughs> so you, you read out, could, s- you, could you read out the full message, Ed? Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh. D- ah! Are they all coming in now? Um, in- interestingly, that's a text from my girlfriend saying, you can quit the messaging programme. Right, okay. <laughs> so hugely helpful and unhelpful all at the same time. It was obviously five points for Mike. You can't, like, Jamali couldn't argue with that. Although Jamali wouldn't have argued with it anyway, would he? Always a glint in Greg's eye, though, when someone brings in something amazing and Greg has a chance to not give it five points. Yes. Because he knows it would be very funny. uh, But he also knows that the Taskmaster audience would not appreciate the humour there. People need to be rewarded. Yeah, it would have been funny, though. My toughest thing has a... um, It's tried and tested... 
So if I'm if I'm scared, and um, you know I've run out of milk, and I need to <laughs> go out and get my nighttime milk, yeah. <laughs> but I can see that there's some street toughs by the news agents, you know, <laughs> wearing leather caps and you know. Some street tough. Then, um, <laughs> if that happens, then then I do this. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Wow. Oh. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> then it's Mr. Tough Guy time. <laughs> TikTok, it's Tough Guy o'clock. Task one. Make the best picture of a big, scary dinosaur using this photocopier. You may not leave the garage. You have 15 minutes. Your time starts now. It's your classic big, scary dinosaur photocopier task. So we've been trying to get a photocopier in a task for a long time, or at least I have. They're very, very hard to get hold of because they're bulky. So we don't want one. We haven't got a big house, as you know. Yeah. Not a lot of storage. And most of our storage is damp. So we try not to keep electrical stuff in storage. So you have to hire it. Uh, when you hire it, they ask what you're going to do with it. Right. And uh, that, it doesn't help if you say, we're trying to make a big scary dinosaur. <laughs> and also, um, it kept breaking. But I was so... During the task, it kept breaking, and uh, a, a man had to come in and keep fixing it. But I really like this task. Yes. Because I think it's one you want to do at home. Definitely. It's a lot of fun, and there's so many different ways you could go about it as well. There's mm -hmm. so many different options. Um, and you get that amazing stuff of Lee's commitment to the task... Yeah, that was is that was brilliant. That was classic Lee, I'd say, on that one. There's some physical stuff, some slapstick. Uh, it took the mick out of me. Uh, some ass stuff from him. Some ass, some lovely ass business. My face was the dinosaur's ass, I think. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah, but it was it horrific. His was absolutely horrific. Could have got the five points, I think. It was a big scary dinosaur. That's and in the my performance notes. Was great. Yeah, I said it deserved five. For me, mm -hmm. that was probably my favourite. Um, and I think Charlotte might have said it looks like the human centipede, and mm. I, I completely agree. It had that Amazing. sort of body horror vibe. How often that is referenced in Taskmaster, considering we're still saying it's a family show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's uh, go to Mike. Um, Mike, uh, who only got one point. Yes. Now, interesting stuff here. Say Mike and Sarah's points were reversed on this one. If Mike had got five and Sarah got one, yeah, he would have won the series by four points. Even interesting. If, even if he got three and she got three, they would have been level pegging at the end. So this is another example of how we could fix it and we don't fix it. Yes. And very interesting that you say that, because when you said if the points were reversed, I could imagine... A scenario where they were reversed because Mike got one. I was surprised Mike got one because it was small, mm. but he took a different route to everyone else. He didn't do loads of body parts, and it looked like quite an interesting, like shadow puppet thing. And I could see Greg enjoying that on another day. Yeah, but like you say, it was small, and it did have to be big. <laughs> big, yes. So that, I think that's what dragged him down. I think uh, it was and scary actually, and a dinosaur. Yeah. So yeah. I think actually it was honourable. Greg did the right thing. Greg did what he had to do. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, sometimes yeah, you, yeah. you're not there to make friends. You're there to um, judge. Well, you know the, the role. And Sarah, so Sarah's was Sarah's was big. You can't deny that. Sarah's was definitely big. Um, yeah, she also. I liked shot, it. I liked it. Yeah, she also shot me with a staple, and I'm surprised we managed to show that in the episode. <laughs> well, it was clearly an accident, and she was clearly extremely remorseful. Yeah, um, one of those moments there where you you know you think centimeter to the left or up and down, and I'll be blind in one eye. So Sarah's, I think, was very, was was strong. Mm. It wasn't my favourite. Um, I think it was a very Sarah thing in that she sort of kind of nailed it and just got it out of the way and did it and there was no chaos involved apart from Lily blinding you. Yeah, yeah, she did what she had to do and she's often done that. And that's why at this stage she was almost unreachable. Yeah. This is one of my favourite Jamali moments in the whole series uh, when he decides he's going to put Greg's head uh, as the head of the dinosaur with his phone with his phone but then um, tells everyone that he thought it might be Dara O'Brien yeah, who hosts that, yeah because he could have won with that thing because he couldn't leave the garage so he, he's done really a clever thing there using, using the well phone. again I think he uses his phone on multiple occasions in the series uh, to record things to certainly record uh, the metronome mm. thing and also to record uh, the months uh, the, uh, yes. the thing for the uh, the months of the well, year. He's a different generation to uh, Lee, for example. So you, 
that generation does automatically reach for their phone, I suppose. Um, we were talking to somebody yesterday about it, whether in normal life you have your phone on you and when you have to do something, you get your phone out and work out how to do it. And there's nothing saying you can't do that in Taskmaster, but it's sort of not the done thing, do you think? Totally. I, I'd say on multiple occasions when I was doing it, there were moments where I thought, well, I can just get my phone out to do that. Mm. And then it's just... It's just not very fun to watch. Not the no. way Jamal, the no, way no, Jamal, Jamal did it was always clever and yeah, exactly. very good. Yeah. So I think it's okay to have your phone, not necessarily on you, but on a hand because, yeah, there are fun things you can do with a phone. And this was one of them. This was definitely yeah. one of them. And yeah, yeah, it was a shame that he thought Dara um, was, was the host. Because that, that is a, it's a, one of Greg's blind spots and uh, yeah, he pressed the button there. But it's nice as well because you could see there's been a wonderful developing relationship with Jamali and Greg across the whole series. That's actually been mm. a little bit of a subplot. Um, and if you if you if you look for it, you can find it. Where yeah. initially Jamali's very confrontational and Greg doesn't like that, and then Jamali continues to be confrontational and Greg eventually has to back down and begins to respect Jamali for that. Uh, and Jamali's been doing better and better in the course of the series because of that as well. And then there was this awkward moment with the Dara O'Brien thing and Greg genuinely looked quite wounded because they've developed a relationship. But it was patched yeah. up fairly quickly. It was teacher and pupil uh, stuff. And I think if this had been episode one, it might have ruined the whole series for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you think I look like Dara O'Brien? A little bit. Are you <laughs> mad? I've got the same vibe. I just thought you and I had started to grow closer together and then yeah, you dropped that bomb. this was ages ago. This was before our blushing in relationship, isn't it? This was like, this was pre... <laughs> You know. All right. Are you okay? It was an innocent mistake. Let, let me ask you this before we move on. <laughs> yeah. What is my name? Greg Davis. Good. Task two. Scientifically work out how much Alex's feet and head weigh. You may not use the internet. Most accurate answer wins. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now. So straight away, you've got an example of stopping people using their phone because it mm. wouldn't be fun at all if people use their phone here, um, even though you told them to scientifically work it out. And the best way of doing that is look up some science. Well, yeah, we want people to look up the science in their heads. Because yes. this is one where hopefully you think you know how to weigh things without weighing them. Or things that can't yeah. be... We all know there must be a way of doing this. And Lee knew the exact way of doing this. Lee was very It's impressive. amazing. Yeah. Really good. I think it turned out he'd done something like it on Do Ducks Quacks Echo? Or Duck something? Quacks Don't Echo. Duck, yeah. So I think he'd got lucky that he'd done it recently enough to remember the science um, yeah. I, this one definitely struck me that you would have been all over this you would have been really manhandling me oh yeah i would have I, when you say i would have been all over it i would have been manhandling you i wouldn't have done the right thing i don't think at no. all i would have had a lot of fun with the task yes yes i mean you would have been <laughs> soaring feet off um this was obviously filmed before covid um because you wouldn't be able to get close to me during COVID. Annoyingly. No, so they all filmed this before COVID. That's that's lucky that there wasn't a situation where you had to have someone sort of yeah. Well, we you filmed around. filmed nearly all of this before COVID. But the only bits we hadn't filmed uh, before COVID was the team tasks, mm -hmm. which you saw were quite specifically distanced, and and the location task in the airfield. Yeah. So we we got pretty lucky with our timing because I think things you know you miss. I do miss them being able to handle me. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the one. reason you. That's the reason you started the show, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's definitely helped my confidence about being touched. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed Lee writing on my leg in his one. That was a really nice. Flourish. It's great. It's just that Ed, Lee knows. Uh, Lee knows what to do to add little mm. moments to it, doesn't he? He's just like he knows how to layer it and make it yeah. look chaotic at he the end. He pushed so hard with the pen, though. I'm quite sensitive. <laughs> I'm quite sensitive with my thighs. <laughs> I think that's really important sometimes. But certainly, what I, uh, I I've tried to do is when I was doing tasks, is try and think of the end image rather than how to get mm. the task done. So try and make something horrific or weird come out at the end. Yeah, and you're right. He, he's a very good example of someone who always added value mm -hmm. but still tried to do the task well because it's yeah, not just definitely. about trying to be funny. You've got to try to do the task well. But yeah. it does help if you try to be funny, but you don't need to. Yes, exactly, yeah. Um, I don't think everyone but, should, but yeah. No, he he definitely. I mean, he he smashed this. I thought it was it was absolutely brilliant, uh, and still was very funny with it. Um, mm. Mike, so close to having a good idea, so close to being there again. He's he's let it slip through his fingers. Very poorly executed, though. Yes, very, very sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> but he had the right idea. He had, he had the, basically had the same idea as Lee, but just yeah. got it completely the wrong way round and took you outside and plopped you in a bath. Yeah, he knew to dunk. 
But amazingly, yeah. he did worse than Sarah Kendall, who just got some fish fingers. That... <laughs> Although I liked her logic. When she went to get meat that was the same size as my meat, I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think... You know, I mean, she did, she did, actually did okay. I mean, Mike's... Mike being, you know, this, it all makes sense now, of course. He's not a man of science. No, no. He's been making it up. So this is why he asked you to get your feet out of the water and then submerge your feet and then to see how far the water had gone up. But, of course, as soon as you submerge your feet, your entire top half of your body Slip comes down. out of the water, so it yeah. was lower down than it was when it started. The container was the problem. Yeah, it wasn't quite yeah. big enough. Yeah. Uh, freezing cold day, but incredibly <laughs> hot water. So painful for all the wrong reasons. You really um, do go through a lot. Um, you were Alex. You were dressed as was it a Roman centurion? Yes. Is was there? I mean, qu- quite often you do things for. Uh, I'd say an obscure and poor pun. Is mm. that is that what was going on there? Do you remember the um, task? I don't know which series. Where there was there was quite upset. I said poor pun, aren't you? Just trying to move on. No, I'm going to give you an example of something. It's I don't think they're poor puns. I think okay. they're just obscure things that I think are funny that no one else does, and especially Greg doesn't. There was a series where they had to work out what was in a box, and but only by touching it. Mm. And and there was a hat and bra, and the hat and bra were wet. Yes. And there's also a model of um, David, the statue of David. Yeah. So it was David hat and uh, bra. David, David hat and bra, yeah. But that and was that part wet. of the task they had to work that out? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And they were wet... And Greg asked me why they were wet, and I said, "Well, because it's wet, David Attenborough." And the sort of joke was that I thought he wasn't Sir David Attenborough; he was wet, David Attenborough. <laughs> and I'd always got confused between Sir and wet. <laughs> but yeah, that's. I mean, <laughs> to make that work, I think you'd have an extra half an hour on the show. You yeah. can't fit that into the edit. No. That your backstories you get mixed up between <laughs> Sir and wet. <laughs> yeah, I think I said, "Yeah, well, there's wet Chris Hoy, isn't there? There's, there's wet Andy Murray." <laughs> And Greg genuinely hates jokes like that. Greg just said, "Why? Why would you say that? Why would you say, we're trying to be. A, we're trying to entertain people." Uh, so on this occasion, I let. I think let's leave this mysterious. Let's okay. say there is a very important reason why I was dressed as a centurion, and the listeners need to work it out. Okay, good. That's interesting. We'll get email in if you think you know the reason. Me. <laughs> email in now and right. tell us. Um, uh, People listening, email in, and I'll get Alex to... I mean, Alex will need to tell me the right answer after this, so mm. we know the right answer. But you don't ever want it revealed, right? No, thank you. Okay, so you don't need to tell me, actually, and don't email in. Um, Do email in. I, I always remember the... Do email um, in. When on Do our e- series... Why? <laughs> Do email in. Do email in. Um, how, so did my... Charlotte, how did Charlotte measure my uh, feet and head? Uh, well, initially, um, this was my favourite. This is probably my favourite way Charlotte's tried to do a task and tried because you know you always look for a loophole in a taskmaster task. Uh, you always look for the clever way of doing it. Um, Charlotte tried tried to do that. She thought she'd found a clever way around it. Um, the first thing she did was asked you how much your head weighed. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> but no one knows how much the head head weighs, do they? No, I don't think so. No. I think Charlotte just did a bit, quite a lot of guessing, really. Yeah. I think, so. I think she she ended up estimating and did it fairly well. Mm. Um, at one point, she uh, she just wobbled her head and feet around to compare them to each other. So it was just sort of like wobbling her feet and then shaking her head around, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I really liked. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of bit of guesstimation. Uh, but then Jamali also did a bit of um, a bit of guesstimation. Was an awful attempt, wasn't it? Uh, well, he guessed 40, your head 40 weighed 40, 40 kilograms. <laughs> yeah, because that's what the scales went up to. And my whole body was on the scale, I think, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I mean, but he it wasn't that he thought your head weighed 40 kg. It's just that he couldn't be bothered. Yes. Um, yeah, and that's fair enough. That is fair and enough. And it's fair enough. You know, he's got his brand, and I'm glad he's sticking to it. Why would he uh, care how much my head weighed? <laughs> <laughs> but if you go down that, if you start going down that road... Slip Have you had head. contestants in the past who've initially, on like day one, said or been acting like, "Why, why are we doing any of this?" What's the... yes, yes, we have uh, someone in series twelve who we sh- sh- I can t- I can tell you now, should we, or do we just yeah. talk about this later on? Uh, I mean, yeah, you, yeah. T- t- tell me now because I think it's the same person I would have guessed for the earlier. Well, well it's well. not actually. It was is it actually. Not? So the 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 logical lady that we've got is 
Victoria Corin Mitchell, of who course. approaches everything. And I, I love this. So we're at series 12 there and we've had whatever, 60 people. And um, she's different to anyone we've had before. Really approaches things with a logic that Greg can't cope with. Um, <laughs> but threw herself into every single task. Uh, it was Alan Davies who on the first day, he remembers thinking he was in a caravan doing something and he just thought, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe. <laughs> Everyone said it was going to be fun, but I don't think this, this team's mad. And then he got into it, luckily. And it was great. He was, yeah. uh, he was it, But he said, it is interesting because on day one, you're thrust into this little world and things are out of your control. And yeah. I think, you know, a lot of people come into the show having been in control of their careers for a long time. Not me. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, that's great. I can't, I'm very excited about the next series. Yeah, you um, should be. Get a fun mix. Uh, so, uh, Sarah um, sort of had the... Per- she had the right idea, I think, but then panicked and started grabbing watermelons and, mm. and fish fingers and meat. I'm not sure she had the right stuff. idea. She had a good idea. Yeah. But... She sort of she seemed to have a good method and then and then used a completely different one. She sort of yeah. backed out of it. The fish uh, fingers was crazy. Yeah. It's one where if you just saw the footage without hearing anything or knowing why they were doing it, if you just saw somebody drawing the outline of someone's foot and then filling that outline with fish fingers <laughs> I like that you wouldn't know. Well you'd know it was Taskmaster, but you you'd be hard pressed to guess what the task was. Yeah, I mean that is. I think that's your legacy now, Alex. That if someone saw someone drawing a foot and then filling it with fish fingers, they would immediately go, "That's Dalsmas." Well, obviously, it's, yeah. Oh God, <laughs> not that again. <laughs> um, so it was. It was five points for Lee Mack. Absolutely smashed it. Four points uh, for Charlotte Ritchie. Uh, some nice guessing. Uh, three points for Sarah Kendall. Fish finger feet. Uh, two points for Mike Wozniak again uh, after the great start with the uh, with the punk haircut. One point, then two points, uh, and then one point for Jamali Maddox. I thought I could just go away. Remember that joke? No. Yeah. How does that joke go? It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's a joke where somebody says, "Have you ever had your boobs weighed?" And then you go, no, and they go, way. Oh, we can do that with my head if you want. Yeah, that's what I was going for. Okay. So also, not everybody can do that joke, just to make that clear. Right. Close friends. <laughs> task three. It is the final uh, pre-recorded task, um, but the final team task as well. Direct your team into the red circle. You must stay on your chair at all times. You may only issue one instruction of three words every 30 seconds. Fastest to get one teammate into the circle wins. Your time starts now. I mean, love, lovely stuff. This is one of those ones where obviously you had to film under COVID conditions, but being restricted by COVID conditions mean that you come up with things, yeah, like this. And it's a really, it's a really fun one. Yeah, I, I didn't mind the restrictions in terms of coming up with the tasks because it just means you've got another thing to factor in, and that's, yes. that's fine. Uh, little bonus fact for you there: um, Lee cut his trousers in half just before the task because it was so hot. <laughs> So he just lopped off the... Um... He's the one who's played fastest and loosest with um, his task outfit. It's quite regularly just not wearing it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I didn't mind that. Because if one, as long as it's only one person who does that, then that's their thing, I suppose. Yes. You know, yeah. someone could say, I'm going to wear something different every task. Yeah, true. Um, what I would say about Lee's is he picked very badly initially. Uh, even though it's a great outfit, it was a leather jacket and a helmet. So mm. it's quite bad if you're filming in the summer months. So yes, you can't, and we all you can't begrudge him that. The, the weather of lockdown one. That's what we were just at the end of that. It was so hot. Yes. Oh, dear. Poor Lee. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah, but yeah, really, really enjoyed this task because... So we always choose it randomly who gets which role if there are different roles within the team. So it was a toss of a coin. Um, but at one point, it looked like Jamali was going to be left <laughs> entirely by himself. <laughs> but of course, because, because you can't... You can't give anyone any different directions, right? So it has to be only one teammate to get across there. Yeah. So I don't know why Sarah thought Charlotte would be... I guess she didn't know either of them at that point, did she? But Charlotte is not the best choice for that, to no. get her going. No, it's a good example of a team task where you don't know whether it's an advantage or disadvantage to have three or two. Probably a disadvantage to have three in this in this scenario, three people in your team. Except you can just abandon one of them and yeah. focus on one. But I think, unfortunately, Sarah was too nice there and... Felt sorry for Jamali. And had to activate him. Yeah, but that, by, by activating him, he sent, she sent him into the nettles and uh, <laughs> she made everyone's life worse. 
Uh, but it's another one where Mike sort of stole the show slightly by doing a somersault in a bunker. I mean, it's. In- I don't know how. I've never seen anyone move like Mike moves. He's like he's like an Italian clown. You just imagine him, sort of as a troubadour, traveling around Europe doing an entertaining clown show for everyone. He's floppy and strong. Floppy and strong. That's exactly what he is. He's like a muscle man, but also one of those toys that you press at the bottom and then he goes woo blue Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and. I mean, Lee and Mike did that really well. They, Oh, yeah, but they were a great team across mm. the whole series. I actually think they did really, really well. There's a couple of failures, but I think they worked together very well for people who'd not met until that day. Yes. There's a lot of pressure being in the team of two because you there's no quiet, but, you know, you, you have to pull your weight. Yes. I, I mean, and that's really a legacy of Tim Key and Frank Skinner. Um, that was a... You know, the other three were just giggly, giggly children. Yeah. But Tim had to really step up for that. That's a high pressure. Suddenly he's with one of his heroes, comedy yeah. heroes. And Frank is with... Who's this guy? Um, <laughs> uh, but they were they were a similar team, I'd say. Lee and Mike they were. and Tim and Frank. Definitely. A similar dynamic. Uh, but they really won that one by miles. And, it, and I think Greg reflected that well with the points. So they got five points each, whereas the team of three got two because they were five times quicker, slower. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, the the main this, the the idea of this task, I guess, when you came up with it, was that when people have blindfolds on and they have to move around, they look they do look silly, it's, especially Charlotte. Like her whole body position changed; mm. she just turned into like a little Muppet character. Yeah, true. And equally, it is interesting to, you know, to have some of your faculties taken away and see how you ding cope. <laughs> how, did, how did you get on with the uh, getting the messages off? Well, I did it, um, and then I've got a voice. I've got a voicemail now, so that decided to <laughs> decided to happen. I like it. I w- I would encourage it. There was a moment where um, Sarah said to Jamali to be brisk, to briskly walk, mm. and I think it really sums Jamali up that that's what he thinks brisk is. Yeah, he was upright and sort of quite powerful, but not brisk. Yeah, not brisk, like he's deliberate, like, he's but a, he's a big, strong man, Jamali. Yes. He's a presence. And I liked his task outfit, as, by the way. I liked the black. Yes. I thought it was... That's, I, 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 I know Jamali, and that's not a task outfit. That is his outfit. Yeah, that is his outfit. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have any other outfits. He's made no. a decision early on. I'm quite jealous of people like that. I've got a good friend who just wears blue jeans and a white t-shirt always. And that yeah. sounds like the Fonz. But, um, <laughs> but it really suits him, and he's never, never thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around. Run! Studio task, Alex. A um, spectacle. We went for a, a spectacle. A real spectacle. And I know I know you're tickled by this sort of thing. You love a big reveal at the end with the with the costumes. Well, this was real credit to Andy Devonshire, the director, I think. Yeah. The, the vision for this, because I didn't know if we'd be able to pull it off. Because, again, this is the second episode filmed on the day. Uh, it's quite a big prop there, those doorways that had to fall over at exactly the right spot. We can't redo yeah. it. And it all comes down to this. And if a studio task fails, we can't do it again. And if, it, yes. if, it, if it's the final one in the series, that's a potentially massive damp squib. But I thought it looked great when the thing fell down. And, and we um, just had... It's obviously... it's Initially, you'd think it would be funnier if they were all wearing a different funny outfit. Mm. And then when you see it, it's absolutely funnier that they're all llamas. Yeah, and I think it's something bonding, you know, that all five of them are llamas. You know, they 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 came in as different people, but by the end they're just llamas. Especially as Sarah messed it up so much. <laughs> um, it just her yeah. the the victory is about to come for Sarah, and she still manages to screw up the studio task and have it on completely the wrong way round with the tail dick and the head all twisted <laughs> up. Yeah, very slow. I mean, she could have thrown she could have thrown the series away. It was it was close. Yeah. If she hadn't done such a big scary dinosaur, <laughs> but that's exciting, right? That. That's that's what yeah. that's what you want, really. You want the potential that someone's going to throw the series away. You don't yeah. you don't want it to be easy street all the way. But through I don't the want it to be snatched from people either, because that would feel so horrible. I, I'm, no, Noel was really anxious that we were going to snatch it away from him, Noel Fielding, because he was really far in advance, and he thought, well, this is it's the sort of program where they will suddenly say, oh, on this task, the winner swaps point numbers with someone else yeah you don't, we don't do want that, to do though. that you don't no do that. I, there's got to be some fairness just yes. about 
Go on, well, go on, I thought a great victory for Charlotte here. I, I really like that she won the the studio task because she did not win the series by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> she was consistently no. bottom, was she? she almost pretty throughout? solidly, uh, solidly bottom, I'd say. Yeah, not. I mean, not in this checks. episode, but yeah, she's had some pretty well, she bad was episodes last every throughout the whole series because she in the first episode she only got five points in the whole episode and from yeah. then on she was last throughout the series yes <laughs> so i'm glad she can put a llama outfit on quickly yeah no it was a, it was a nice it was a nice end for her uh, and of course the victory for sarah candle a, des- a deserving champion a classic a classic taskmaster champion in many ways you're displaying your tail proudly why not yeah. this isn't like degrading or anything no, no, no. Greg, is there any possibility we could stand here as long as possible? Hey, listen, I just want the casting directors to have a good look. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we quickly mention the other three people in Series 12? We've mentioned Alan Davies and Victoria Corin Mitchell. Yes, I feel it's very exciting. I think it's always an exciting moment when you announce the new contestants uh, straight after the series. Mm. Um, and I think people are going to be very excited about this lineup. So we've, we've talked about we've talked about Alan, um, unless there's anything else you want to say about no, Alan. No, 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 no. He's a great get. Yes, he's a great get. By the way, there's a lovely little reveal video after the episode tonight, which I don't know, you have you seen it, Ed? Probably not. I've not seen it, no, no. no it's no. a very nice moment, and we're trying to hint at a narrative, which is true, that goes on between Greg and I, between Greg and me, sorry. Yes. Um, which um, hopefully people will enjoy. There's a, there's a little moment which we filmed in the studio between the shows, uh, at the end of one of the shows, where I'm sweeping up, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I hope people have enjoyed that because we might try to do more of that sort of thing. Great. Um, VCM, yes. of course, very exciting to have her. VCM, she is one of yeah. one of the most requested, I'd say. Yeah, an interesting one because I think she would say that she's not a comedian, but I think Charlotte Ritchie would say she's not a comedian. We we don't just have comedians; we have just funny people, funny people, say, yeah, who work in comedy, and she definitely works in comedy, mm-hmm. uh, and she is a funny person, but she's not a stand-up. Um, but she's someone who can hold their own, and she's also our first poker millionaire. Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's an intriguing prospect, I think. Yeah, a lot of people um, always ask for uh, they want her and David to do it together, but mm. you sort of feel like pre-established relationships are not as fun as creating your own. Yeah, I shy away from couples. Lots, it does get requested because I think it would take the shine off the other three people. Mm-hmm. I think it, automatically those two people have are in sharper focus. Uh, although having five couples do a one-off could be quite funny, or it could be a mess. Yeah, I think that would be a mess. Correct. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, but very excited to see what Victoria does. Uh, we've got Guz. Guz Khan, another often requested person. I mean, no one ever... People often guess the next lineup, but never get it right. Yeah. Uh, thankfully. But Guz is, Guz is great. People should watch Man Like, Be- Man like Mobine. It's a very good... Sitcom yeah. that he writes and acts in, and he's uh, someone I think we've caught at exactly the right time. We got lucky as yeah. as his career is about to rise meteorically. He's, he's already up, but he's going to be even more up. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm very excited to see him. I'm excited to see all of them. Desiree, of course. Desiree is a real star of the series. Just to reveal that now, Great. someone I didn't know very well. I've only done a couple of things with her. Uh, and I really got to know her because I, I love that I come out of this having spent a lot of time with five new people, all yeah. five people, and uh, the five of them. So the last one is Morgana Robinson, yes, who um, is a chameleon and a comedian in that she is rarely herself, and is in this. You have to be in Taskmaster, but it is also a, a force of nature. But the five of them have bonded as well as any. Of the five, their WhatsApp group is as strong as yours, Ed. The chickpeas, the chickpeas, uh, as strong as Series Four's WhatsApp, which was probably the benchmark of WhatsApp groups. But Series Five, well, uh, series, sorry, four, series Four got jealous that Series Nine all went out for an afternoon tea at Sketch, so they did the same thing. Yes, uh, but Series Twelve are looking like they could be the ones to beat in the future. They're a really good group, competitive but funny, and. Yeah, it's a really joyful series, this one. I think because it was purely in lockdown. We started in lockdown and ended in lockdown, so we had all our fun together. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good one, and that'll be out in September. September, so exciting. Um, a very, very strong lineup. Well, as they all as they all are, Alex. 
Alex Horn. Thank you very much for coming Again, back. Again, softer, please. Alex Horn. Lovely. Thank you very much for coming uh, back on the Taskmaster podcast. You will be forced to come on again uh, after this because uh, you've got the goss, you've got the facts. Of course, we do now have to get you to rate the Taskmaster podcast experience between one and five points again. Hmm. Five. Thank you. <laughs> it took you ages to get to that, but I'll, I'll take it. Thank you very much, Alex Horn. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. Alex Horn there. Thank you, as always, Alex, for popping in. Uh, and we'll be hearing more from Alex uh, in upcoming episodes of the podcast. Uh, some bonus fact finder sections, I think. He said he's up for doing more of those. So we'll look forward to that. But now, it's the coronation. Sarah Kendall has been crowned. Let's talk to her. I wonder if she's feeling good about the whole situation. Sarah Kendall, let's chat to her now. Champion Taskmaster Series 11. Welcome to the winner mm-hmm. of Series 11 of Taskmaster. She already doesn't look that happy to be called the winner. She looks quite embarrassed by the whole thing. It's Sarah <laughs> Kendall. <laughs> I just speed watched the final episode and I just did so badly in every task <laughs> it's it's so bad to have won because i had created such a lead yeah that that couldn't that they couldn't close the gap on my lead but i failed so abysmally no in... matter how hard you tried to throw away that lead in the final episode there was no way of catching you oh i like the idea that that was all done by design um I just, every single task, my brain had just left the building and I was just watching it. She was going, oh my God, oh my God. And then to win on the back of such a weak episode, it just, you know, it feels wrong. It feels so morally wrong. Did you realise going into it that it would be very, very hard for anyone to catch you? No. No, and because what you're really banking on is that everyone will continue to perform in a similar way so they can't close the gap. But then if one of them, like if any of them, like if Lee or Mike had had an outstanding episode, which sometimes people do, sometimes they just smash it. Yeah. And I just assumed that that was going to happen. And, and I saw, I also sort of thought that there would be some sort of design by the producers to make it that no. kind of tense. But no, there, there was no Machiavellian design there. It's, it's impossible for them to design it, isn't it? Because it's yeah. so reliant on Greg just doing whatever he wants on a day-to-day basis that it's impossible yeah. for them to work out yeah. what's going to happen. Because we always get asked that. Because uh, you know, even if someone's terrible in a, in a series and they're having an awful series, some there's always one episode mm. where it all comes together for the bad person <laughs> and they win an episode, and it's amazing yeah. and like heroic and victorious. But that yeah, is beautiful. just luck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's all and it's all those sporting narratives that we love, like Eric the Eel, and like all those times when the outsider just for no apparent reason just completely slays the competition. Yeah. Which is, you know, the, the reason why you tune in, really. But um, I just, for, I remember recording that episode and failing so badly on my backpack. And I thought, oh, there's no way I'm going to win this now. Like, And then each task, I was just, particularly the golf course one, I yeah. knew that was coming up. And I was like, oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Cause well, Lee- <laughs> I mean, let's just talk about this because we're not going to talk about the episode in order in detail because we've, we've done that with you before. But yeah. we, we've got loads of little highlights from l- since last time you were on the podcast to talk about. Let's just dive straight into the having having to guide Charlotte and Jamali across the across yeah. the golf course. Yeah, I, um, I yeah, and I, th- I think we talked about this last time about how when you have a really bad idea and then you panic because you know it's a bad idea. But yeah. all you can do is double down on your bad idea because you're so busy going, I know I'm failing. So I feel like it's like America in Vietnam. It's yeah. like they knew that the strategy wasn't working. They were being internationally humiliated. So all they could do was double down on what they were doing in Vietnam because they had Just no... Just keep going. Yeah, every task, I, I sort of go, oh, that's America in Vietnam. That's yeah, I mean, that one particularly was, you know, just getting people to run wildly across a plane. I know. Uh, that and, that re- yeah. really felt like Vietnam. I know. And then I was going, turn. <laughs> well, that was good. I mean, Greg gave you credit for that, as he should have done, because that was turning one word into quite a detailed command. Right. So you didn't have to give any degrees. It was just the turn. And then you stopped saying, <laughs> you want them to stop. It, I thought that was quite impressive. But when you just panicked and got Charlotte to <sighs> run... Just shouted, Charlotte, run. run. 
I had no trunk. idea why you did that. And then her run, <laughs> she looked like a, a, a Muppet. She looked like genuinely yeah. looked like one of the Muppets because uh, she was sort of hunched forward and her yeah. arms were sort of like flappy <laughs> like a puppet's. And she yeah. just went for it. But then I was um, thinking, you know, but have you ever done that thing where it's the middle of the night and you're walking through a room and then someone switches on a light? And then you're in this weird position that you move in total darkness. It's how you protectively move through the dark. Yeah. And it's like crouched yeah. with your arms outstretched. And then someone switches yeah. on a light. And then you stand upright and put your arms yeah. down. <laughs> she was doing that run that you do. And then someone switches on the light. And you go, what the fuck am I yeah. doing? Um, what the fuck? What, what am the I fudge? playing at? What am I doing? <laughs> but Lee's strategy was so great. He just went uphill, left, like really specific. Yeah, I, I just I don't know, and I'd forgot I had forgotten about Jamali. I just gone, oh Jamali, oh my god, like I've left you over. I'm so sorry, because I. I but just, that, I think that was the right thing to do because it would have been way more complicated to try and maneuver both of them to. You only need to get one of them on there anyway, right? So right. it was. I think you were right to leave Jamali on there. I think you might have picked the wrong person mm. to get to the red dot in terms of. In terms of ability of following the instructions and completing tasks, you weren't yeah. to know at the time, but Jamali was the one to, to go In with, hindsight, really. I, I, yeah, maybe I should have, maybe. But then I think when, but I think he was even facing the wrong way from the get-go. Like, I think that's why I chose Charlotte, because I think I was going to have to spend time getting him yeah. to turn around. So I just went, Charlotte, because she was facing in the right direction. Run. Charlotte, run. What a trust exercise. You cannot see anything and you're just told to run. Yeah, absolutely yeah. terrifying. And and yeah. of course, you got the, the episode title in there, Activate Jamali. Activate um, Jamali. Like it was yeah. a big robot. Yeah, or it. like I'm some sort of puppet master with a, people all over the globe that can be activated at any... Yeah. At, all i got to do is press this button. <laughs> and shout run. You don't and know what they're run. doing, but you no, can activate they, them. <laughs> they don't. It's very frightening for them, actually. Yeah. <laughs> There's loads. Of, there's loads of things to catch up on, though, Sarah. I mean, we talked about guiding guiding Charlotte Jabali terribly in that final task. <laughs> also, in this episode, you nearly blind Alex. Bl- blown. You bl- you nearly blow. You nearly blown him with a staple with a staple with a I staple did. gun. Yeah, I did. I mean, that was just a classic. Is this thing loaded? Moment. I mean, this is like the saddest story when you read in the news. When is this thing loaded? And then and I absolutely. I mean, I was, but then there was another part of me that just, I was just so amused by it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Funnier. It is funny. Uh, pointing a staple gun at someone and just firing one off. I mean, that will never not amuse me. And also because it's Alex, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's and the fertile. fact he was fine, he was sort of fine with it. And, and he was like, oh, no, you just hit me on the top lip. Um, <laughs> which still sounds painful. I think it's most so other perfect. people would be like, you hit me on the top lip. He was like, no, it was fine. Don't it's worry about so- that. It's also because the lips are just a bit more sensitive than all the other skin on the face. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. just that yeah. extra bit funny. I mean, I that or an eyelid. Yeah, I would also eyelid. have accepted eyelid. <laughs> End of his dick, something like that. Yeah, yeah that would yeah, have been yeah, perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if I got him in the penis, that would have been the sweet oh, well. spot. That would have been end of. I think it, that's the mic drop. You can just leave and go, I'm not filming anything yeah. else. I'm, I'm assuming I've won everything forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've stapled Alex Horn's penis from, from a safe distance. <laughs> I was that pretty happy points. with that dinosaur, actually. Um, the, dinosaur was, the dinosaur was really strong, I thought. I thought mm-hmm. everyone's, uh, everyone's dinosaur had, had something to say for it. I thought Charlotte's uh, one with, the, with her own head in its mouth. I was like, that's... That was my favourite. That was the yeah. little stroke of genius that, that I thought was, was... wasn't it? Really good. Un- underscored by Greg as per. Yeah. Um, you uh, also, things we've got to catch up on, uh, you licked some yoghurt thinking it might be poo. Yeah. Uh, the yo- the yoghurt tower task, you were like, well... It might be poo. It might be yogurt. Let's double check it. The only, only way that you way. could possibly do this. Yeah, l- that's always lick the, po- lick the possible poo. Look, I'll be honest with you. That is um, a gag that I frequently used when my kids were young, and they'd have yeah. chocolate all over their fingers, and I'd loudly say, "Is that chocolate or poo?" And then I'd lick their <laughs> finger. So I was doing old gear. If I'm being that, completely yeah, honest, yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, it's always a shame to see people doing material on Taskmaster. I'm so but... sorry. I was yeah. doing parenting gear, and you opened with that for a while, didn't you? You used to come out mm-hmm. on stage with chocolate yeah, all over yeah. your hands, and, and I'd say... have to meet a person beforehand, dip their fingers yeah. in shit. I mean, I got very sick. Yeah, 
<laughs> has um, that ever has that joke with your kids ever backfired? Has it ever been has it ever been poo? No, it's never no. been shit. I mean, if, <laughs> I'm not going to put my children's shit in my mouth. Um, no, uh, look, I I knew I knew I knew that 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 was that was a that was slightly cheeky doing a doing a thing there, but yeah. Hey, it's good stuff. It's, it's all good, good stuff. stuff. It's all good. Good gear, stuff. good gear. Doesn't it? <laughs> That's you know, right. I'm not going fu- to get apologize. Get okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a bit of yogurt in the number two. Is there? <laughs> no, hold on. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Is it yogurt or is it poo? <laughs> it's yogurt. Congratulations. <laughs> now, um, we've done some uh, some statistics here at the Taskmaster podcast, Sarah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I don't I don't know if you're going to like it. I'm going to love it. I already, uh, like, I'm in, go, talk, say it. So, you won Taskmaster with 158 points. That's correct. Correct. You beat Mike by four. Like you say, you were re- mm. that huge lead that you gained in the first half of the series. You really didn't enjoy having that, so you just started frittering it away for the rest of it. Mm. Since, the, since Taskmaster has gone to 10 episodes, so I believe probably since series six. Yeah. That's the least number of points that someone has won a series with. How do you feel about that? I did not expect that sentence to go in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the producer of the Taskmaster podcast has told me. You know, I've not checked. I can't remember how many points I got. I genuinely don't know. But I apparently am... right, it's the that... least number of points that someone has won with. I honestly was bracing myself for the following sentences. That's the biggest lead anyone has ever yeah. had. And that's yeah. the highest aggregate score. That mm-hmm. and to give you no. any idea of what it's like living inside my head and thinking great things will happen. And then when reality butts up against that. Yeah. How do I feel about that? Yeah, look, how do you feel w- about it? A win is a win. I mean, you know. I don't think you mean that. I think you're really upset I'm about that. Hurt. <laughs> I'm trying to be okay with it. Well, I don't know. Oh, jeez, that's oh, that's. I did not expect that. Okay. Well, look. But then maybe that means that I was in a particularly poor batch. You know, like if I. Well, I mean that that would suggest that. I mean, if so. Yeah. Um, we've also got this information. I think the producer of this podcast really got it in for you because she sent me a, a long list of stats mm. uh, to chip away at your confidence. Go on. Um, so this is from this is from an email from the producer. Yeah. Uh, she has won with the least amount of points since the series went to ten eps. Looking at the scores after episode four, she never gets more than sixteen points. Yeah. On four episodes, she only scores twelve points. Mm. Yeah. So again, I think that if anything, that's showing what appalling competition I had. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I'm getting from this. You uh, definitely had uh, some. I mean, Charlotte obviously, I think, mm. was trying her hardest, but it didn't come together for her. Mm. Um, you definitely had some rogue elements. I would say both Mike and Lee were willing to commit to things even if they knew that they were going to reduce yes. their points. And yeah. then Jamali just couldn't have cared less, really, and just wanted to stamp on stuff. Yeah, I think Jamali... Uh, well, the way I'm trying to spin all these statistics in my head is that it just reflects so much worse on the people who lost. Because, yeah. yes, this is all true, but I won, which just really meant that I was the best of a shit bunch. So that means that there are four other people who should be much more embarrassed than me. But, but they wouldn't be, would they? I think everyone went in there, which is why it was a great series. I loved yeah. this series. Everyone went in there with different aims. And yes. I think your aim was eyes on the prize. <laughs> get it done. Get it won. There is another aspect. Okay, yeah, all right. Fair, yes, that is fair you enough. You were very funny, Sarah. Don't, don't get me wrong. But what was very funny about you is clearly how focused you were on winning. And yeah, how, but then and how like serious and you just wanted to do it and you, yeah. you sort of through gritted teeth. Yeah, but then look, if I'm if I'm really going to pop the bonnet on this program, I think <laughs> I think that, that should what... be the name of the podcast. It should be called Pop the Bonnet. <laughs> yeah, um, I think that what this show, like when I watch the show and really get into it, it's so they're employing people who are comedians and funny mm. people and most funny people know what's funny about them because we've, we we know our strength and we lean into that quite heavily and we hone that through our stage acts and how we portray how you know the way our careers have, have panned out and I know that about myself I know that I'm not a rebel I know that I'm not um uh I'm not going to be the person who smashes stuff up I'm not uh, like I know that the thing that is amusing about me is my seriousness yeah. So, of course, I'm going to lean on that very heavily because that's actually who I am. And that is the thing that I think is amusing. So I think 
like what you're saying is quite true, but I also think that all of us kind of know our comedy spirit animal Definitely, in a sense. Yeah. So if you know that your spirit animal is that you're far too intense and you take everything far too seriously, like you are Ron Burgundy, then you yeah. go and go and do that because that's why yeah. they've employed you. Bring bring that knowledge of who you are comedically to the show. So I knew that the way that I would, you know, the, the, that who I was going to be on this show is actually who I am comedically, which is I do take everything far too seriously. Um, and it's tiring, and I don't lead a good life. I'm generally not happy. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of look. There's a lot of blowback on this, but um, that is the best excuse I have ever heard anyone give for being creative but also competitive. <laughs> and I'm going to use that when people ask me about the series I did. Yeah, what are you? I'm going to say? say. Well, the thing is, I was you know leaning into my comic persona because that's why they hired me so you know yes. i was actually doing i was making the best creative decisions it's just so happened that yeah. that my persona wins <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right then so yeah i'm that, gonna do it that's, that's good do you yeah. uh do also you i any... like what i like watching i i personally like watching people try really hard and also you need that in the series right you need the full yeah. the full range of people yeah you can't have a panel of jamalis no because everything would be flat by the end of it There'd be Everything no, there'd be no set on. left. Yeah. <laughs> dead bodies. <laughs> um, do you have any personal highlights? If someone said to you straight, straight away, describe Taskmaster to me through your favourite task, what, what would you say? Um... I liked the tasks at the house. I really enjoyed the... Because those were a lot smaller and fiddlier. And I found the sort of outdoors stuff... Maybe I, I just got a bit bamboozled. I got more bamboozled by the outdoor stuff. So I enjoyed the... the I really laughed so hard when I made Alex eat the, the meal that I'd prepared. That, yeah. that really... It just made me laugh. So, and he did. And he did eat it. And he took a big bite and... I um I I don't know if they showed it when they when they on the broadcast, but I remember I was laughing so hard that I started to do that weird knee squeezy thing because I <laughs> honestly thought I was going to piss. Like I was kind of grabbing at my crotch, going "Oh fuck, 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 fuck!" Because like, it just made me laugh so much. Yeah, you're. I get real. a real I, I get a real delight watching people do things like that. Well, Alex, of course, always. I mean, you know, he says he's going to eat it, and he he always does. That was the one thing I was very sad I never got to do was make Alex do a make Alex a meal task um yeah. we got to make him a cup of tea but not the not the meal uh what did you so do with the was, cup of tea well it was all so it was a team task it was actually one of the last tasks in the series I think um mm. and all the stuff that we needed to make the cup of tea was like chained or glued to the table um <laughs> but we just went we went all out I ended up sucking the milk out of a jug and spitting it into the mug oh, that's and so making great. it to make Alex drink my spit and stuff that's um, great that's <laughs> so that really was fun. great but your yeah, your meal was the uh, I've actually got it here. It's a, a bed of lettuce with an apple inside and an avocado with couscous and salmon plus orange skin filled with banana with Fanta on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was so proud of the Fanta on top, <laughs> just drenching it in Fanta. <laughs> Man, that made me laugh. See that that to me is not that goes against your persona because that's chaotic. You were just like at the end, just fuck it, just pour Fanta all over it. Yeah, I was trying to get. I just wanted to get more ingredients in. Yeah. You know? And I was slightly worried about the actual, like, I think if Greg had been nasty, he could have tripped me up on the true definition of Russian doll. Because in, yeah. in, in reality, I was doing a hemisphere of Russian dolls. Yeah. I wasn't um, strategically like putting an egg inside a coconut, inside a watermelon. A lot of my stuff was sitting in a thing. It wasn't enclosed. Yeah. And I think that that was quite generous that he didn't disqualify me for that. And I can imagine him saying, that's not a Russian doll, that's a hemisphere of a Russian doll. Yeah, I mean, like, that. just then, as I said it, I'm like, am I Greg Davies? <laughs> <laughs> Is this something with well, being John Malkovich and I've been channeled into his body or something? Um, that would help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good highlight. Any, mm. any, low, any low lights? Apart from the jelly, we've discussed the jelly a lot. Yeah. We know, we know that was... <laughs> It's not wasn't a particular highlight for you. No, but as you said, Lee Mac really he helped took the me out there. On that. Yeah, <laughs> he did me. He did me a yeah. big one. Um, mm, low lights, definitely a golf course one. I, when I was doing that task, I just, I, 
I knew it was going to cut together so badly. I, I could already imagine it being played on television. Do you know, did you ever have those sort of out of body moments where you're like, oh, yeah. I can see this being played on television and people going, why are you so dumb? Yeah, yeah, most of them, I think. Yeah, that um, for me was a real, and I was dreading that task. And also, there were a whole load of tasks that we filmed that they didn't put to air. Yeah. So I was hoping, oh, maybe they won't play that one. Like maybe the golf, because it, it was in the final episode. So we'd gone nine episodes and I was like, oh my God, I think yeah, that's the worry. The that's the worry, isn't it? When you're there going, either it's out the edit or it's such a disaster that they've saved it for the final episode. And when that, So happen. how did you feel when Alex announced that as the final task of the series? I thought, oh no, our hero's in trouble. I thought... <laughs> 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 but then I thought, but maybe Lee will have done something so stupid that yeah. it's okay. You're just praying Lee's trousers fall down or something. Yeah, exactly. Or he pooed yeah. himself and they had yeah. to <laughs> get <laughs> Which, which I mean, in, this, in the context of this series, wouldn't be that unbelievable, no, really. No, no, exactly. So I kind of thought, oh, maybe Lee, maybe he was just as stupid. And then he smashed it. And I was watching and I was like, oh, that's how you do the task. Oh, God, that's how you do the task. <laughs> And then when they went, now we're going to play Sarah's, I was like, oh, good Lord. Okay. And, that, and then I kind of thought, oh, this will be the sort of knife edge thing where I lose my unassailable lead. Yeah. I mean, um, that you can always tell when they're showing back a task in the way they've edited it, quite how chaotic it is. Yeah. Because they'll do a quick music change and that's what they had to do for you. And it's Charlotte Run and then it goes to fast music and you're like, oh, no. They played the song, the title track, Dumb Shit. <laughs> oh, they're playing the dumb shit song. Okay. Dumb shit. MP4. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Ninety. Both. Oh. Uh, left. Oh. Jamali. Turn. Walk. Both turn walk. There were a couple of other tasks that unfortunately didn't get played that I thought, oh, and I kept on thinking, oh, it's okay. They'll play that that really good thing that I did. That, that'll that come up. Interesting. Then, I don't know if I told you about this last time. There was one that I was so proud of. And it was, um, you had to do a conversation with yourself. You had to do like, it was something about um, w like recording yourself and working with yourself. Okay. I did a song and I did a four part yeah. harmony. And it's a really serious love ballad <laughs> with really serious lyrics. And I did yeah. it really seriously. And I was spotlit, like, kind of like Liza Minnelli in Cabaret, but yeah. in the garage. And um, there was smoke, like, there was all this smoke around me. And there was going to be, like, a four split screen. And the whole series, I was like, it's okay. They'll play that thing. That's going to be the last thing. And that's going to be the That'll perfect, be the final thing the of the series, of the series. Yeah. where I get all my points back. <laughs> <laughs> And everyone's going to respect me. <laughs> so at that moment, when they announce the final task, yeah. you've got one side of your brain going, please be the song. Yeah. And the other please. half of your brain going, please don't be the sat up an umpire's chair telling yeah. Charlotte to run for no reason. Yeah. And then putting on a llama suit backwards. So I had a llama <laughs> fluffy <laughs> dick. Honestly, yeah. I've not thought, I didn't think about this, but I think about it now. It's the least dignified win of any series of all time, I think. I know. Yeah. It's, uh, unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm expecting there being some sort of like public inquiry or something because it, it really, I don't, and there was a thing where Greg said, no, 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 just everyone stay there. I want all the casting directors to see it. <laughs> And it was so... I mean, everyone looks undignified, but I'm just that extra level of undignified because my... Yeah, you really, really Mine's on backwards. <laughs> mine's on backwards. <laughs> and just how you've managed to get it on backwards as well. So you've got the big fluffy neck at the front and then somehow twisted the neck all the way yeah. around so the head's on properly. So yeah. it must have been was... so difficult to get on. It was. And I was also really sad when I was doing that task because... <laughs> I knew I'd blown, like, I, I, I'd i lost track of the points, but I was like, I must have yeah. blown my lead. And then I was really sad that I hadn't won Taskmaster. Yeah. And then I thought, just do this really well. And as I got the costume on, I could sense it was on back to front. And it made me, I was like, oh, 
Yeah. I gotta I gotta keep going now because everyone I can hear everyone next to me like people are like finishing. They're doing so well. They're all doing so well, and you were doing well until you blew it, Sarah. <laughs> and then so I was doing the whole task a little bit depressed anyway because I was like, oh. And then um and then I had to sort of do the big reveal where I had like this fluffy dick where the yeah. tail should have been because it was over my crotch and I, I was just a bit sad at that point. Uh, we're very similar because the the way we should have been in that situation is been really happy that we've done a good series and everyone's <laughs> enjoyed it and it's been really fun and you know ten episodes of a TV show yeah. on a good channel is is such a thing to celebrate. But when I did, I'd lost track of the points as well, yeah. and I thought I'd blown it. <clears throat> I thought it was all down to that live task, and then mm. the live task was basically draw the don't draw the short straw, but it was breadsticks <laughs> and an apron. And I immediately, and it was David Baddiel, I had to pick a breadstick out of his apron, and I immediately drew the short one, and I was like, well, that's, that's it, done. Yeah. And I went and sat on the bench because I was out, mm. and I was just like, try and make your face look like you're not genuinely yeah. angry. Yeah. And I can't, I can't do no, that. I know, I know. <laughs> try to act like you don't care when you've yeah. started caring about this. You've started to care about it so much, and you want the dumb trophy, and you yeah. want to win it, and now you haven't won it. Why do you always fuck up? Like, the internal monologue is horrific. Yeah. Yeah. This is Just... typical you, Sarah. You go in and you do your best and it's not enough. Yeah, that's what was going through my head and I'm in a fucking back-to-front line. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's so difficult to then get perspective. Because I remember <laughs> sitting on that bench being like, God, I can't believe you, you've, done it. you've thrown it all away. This is going to be so good. And I was like, okay, Ed, what are you angry about? You just pulled a shortbread stick out of David Baddiel's apron. Yeah. This is enough. But, <laughs> but then you and I, like, we know that that's all life is. Life is just yeah. drawing bread stri- sticks and putting on llama <laughs> costumes. Like, the whole thing is the microcosm of the pointlessness of life that you keep trying anyway. Yeah. Like, it is. It's all just a bunch of dumb tasks. That's what's so profound about the show. Yeah. Is that it is just, it is life. It is so true to life. All your admin tasks, that's basically shouting at someone on a golf course to get them to a big red dot. Like, it's just, you know. Yeah. That's just... like a group email is what that is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're just filling time till we die with stupid tasks that are repetitive and they just keep popping up. So, well, yeah, congratulations. Look, thanks. Yeah, good one. <laughs> right. Alex, can yeah. you show Sarah's positive affirmation system for once she's made a decision? Yeah, I did isolate something. And I might even set up a, a, a hairdryer as well, because then it can be like a blizzard. Yeah, a blizzard! <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, who are you angry with? It's like someone inside's gone, not a blizzard, and you've gone, yeah, blizzard! <laughs> I do undermine myself constantly and have to... There is that sort of... Yeah, that's actually a really chilling insight into every day oh. of my life. Sorry to put it on national television. Oh, no, it's fine. If you got to do the series all again, if you got to... Yeah. I no. mean, you know, there, you know there's... You know, the potential of Champion of Champions as well. So I guess oh you might, God. You might get oh to do some... Oh, my God. <laughs> you might get to do some more tasks. Would <laughs> you approach it, having, having been through the tasks, the studio, and then seen the episodes, would you do anything differently? Do you think you could I don't do think I can. I don't think I can. I, I think it is the un... You cannot prepare for it. It's the unstudiable yeah. exam. It's the untrainable sports match. I don't. I yeah. don't. I think you are. That's what's so depressing about it is all you have are the tools of your personality and intellect. And if it's the lowest score of any winner, that's the cross section. That's the length and breadth of my capabilities. Oh, I, just I can't, wish I I've can't not told you that. Now I can. T- that's really got in your head. I can. T- <laughs> one five eight. One five eight. Lowest score ever. One five eight. Not bad for an IQ test. Not so great for a taskmaster outcome. I mean, God. 158, shit a brick. Well, look, if I'm going to try to be positive, there's plenty of room for subsequent series where other people can embarrass themselves even more. Yes, yeah, exactly. As we speak about this, they have announced um, series 12. Okay. Um, So if I give you who's who's on Mm. series 12 now, Mm. uh, will you tell me as a winner who you think has has that winning gene? (sighs) Heavy is the head that weighs the crown. Hang on. Yeah. I Go think on. so. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to take you through who's doing it. Guz Khan, mm. Desiree Birch, mm. Alan Davis, mm. Morgana Robinson, and mm. Victoria Corrin Mitchell. It's a great lineup, Ooh. but who's got that? Who's got that? Who's got that winning gene? Mm. I know who all these people are, but I don't really know them that well personally. Realistically, the younger people do better. Yeah. Um, I think. 
Oh, that's not true, actually. As I've said that, that's not true. Um, I, I, because I, Lee kept sort of, Lee definitely sort of pointed out that he and I struggled to absorb what was being asked of us. Whereas I think the younger contestants just go, got it. Whereas I think yeah. we, we were reading the piece of paper repeatedly trying to, to the point where I did feel like, oh, maybe I actually have a problem with reading and understanding words because <laughs> I don't know what they're asking me to do. Um, who's going to be the one to watch? I think Desiree. Yeah. I think she's just going to have, I think she's got to kill, I think she's going to go for it. Yeah. And I think she she's going to I have, think she will. She's and in I the think sweet she's... spot. She's in the sweet spot of youth. So she'll have a fast brain. Uh, I think she'll know what's being asked of us very uh, of her very quickly, and I think she's a strong competitor. I've seen her live shows and the energy in her live yeah. show. Like I saw her live show in Edinburgh two years in two thousand and nineteen, but her show was so energetic. It was um, yeah. like, and I think that that those energy levels that's going to see you through. She's very no bullshit as well. Yeah. Like I think she'll cut through a lot of the crap, uh, and yeah, I agree. She'll be very energetic. Yeah, she's I good. She's a strong contender. And I think she'll stand up to Greg. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I stood up to Greg much in the studio. Well, you kind of had. You all just sort of hid behind Jamali a lot of the time. I think. <laughs> I really loved the relationship between Greg and Jamali. It yeah, was. There was respect by the end. Yeah, but what what I love about it is how cinematic their journey was. It was very officer and a gentleman. <laughs> It was very sort of Lou Gossett Jr. to Richard Gere, like, oh, this wild young man is doing my head in. And then eventually became, you know what? You're all right. <laughs> I respect um, this. You remind me of me when I was a kid. Yeah, it was every trope of every 80s um, Jerry Bruckheimer film. Yeah. It was Days of Thunder. It was Robert Duvall to Tom Cruise. It was <laughs> Maverick with Tom Skerritt. It was just the the older sort of silverback and the young crazy guy, but then like this kind of actually this kid's got real talent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think there's an, an extra element to it where I think Greg just couldn't be bothered to stand up to him anymore. I think Greg was just think? a bit more like, ah, fine. It was the pupil he gave up on. <laughs> Say what you want, yeah. So it's Say the opposite of I'm every re- movie I've just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Say what you want, I'm retiring next year. That's sort okay. Of thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> sort of dangerous minds, but stopping caring in act two. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I gotcha. Okay. <laughs> would you do it again? If they said, Sarah, you've got to come back, you've got to do a full series again, mm. would you do it again, knowing what you know now? Yeah, I've got two children to educate. I'll, I'll do anything. I'll. <laughs> so it wasn't necessarily the experience of Taskmaster. You will just, and I quote, do anything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I need money to live. So yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And there's no live work. So yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. We all have lives to finance, Ed. It's called show but... business, not show fun. But you did it. You did enjoy the experience of being on Taskmaster. I, I had tell. a wonderful time. I yeah. had such a nice time. Like I feel like you know, I like to, you know, putting all sort of cynicism aside. It was so much fun. I laughed so much, and the studio days were such a joy. Like they really, every time they'd sort of you know, they'd have to reset or whatever, and we'd all go outside and chat. I was just having the loveliest time. Yeah. They just it was a really, really lovely gang of people. Except it, it Mike Wozniak, like a, he's so yeah. aggressive. So, so aggressive. aggressive, and I mean, I'm so sorry you had to listen to his hemorrhoid pop out in oh, in such a actually, play through studio favorite, speakers. That's my favourite thing. This, how yeah. did I forget that? That was the funniest thing I've ever... That was incredible. And his face, like the, wait, 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 that yeah. face with the finger point. And then point. looking up, yeah. Ah! <laughs> and then for it to be so quiet, for it to be... It's just not the sound I was expecting, and yet it was absolutely the sound I was expecting. Yeah. That's oh, the boy. perfect sort of Venn diagram, isn't it? Where you're like, it shouldn't have sounded like that, but it absolutely should have sounded like that. I mean, it's incredible. I, I wouldn't want it to be the thing that that sort of takes my career to the next level, but I think yeah. Mike's fine with it. Right, when he yes. described it as being an absolute casserole down there. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. That's just... It's perfect, isn't it? It is perfect. Yeah, it's really wonderful. Really wonderful. (laughs) 
Sarah, thank you so much for coming back on the Taskmaster podcast. Congratulations again on Thanks, your victory. Ed. We're all very Thanks. happy. All very happy for you. Thanks, Ed. Um, <laughs> Thanks and for you're taking on it so picnic. graciously. <laughs> well, no, I've got one five eight. I've got that. To... <laughs> we'll probably find out that's wrong. We'll probably find out I got less or something. But uh, it's worth it's worth it for your reaction. Also, recently, oh. just as a little extra thing before before we say goodbye, uh, someone contacted us on Twitter recently to say that we look the same. Uh, and then a few people yeah. had a go at making mock up pictures that. of my face <laughs> with your hair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not bad. Do you think I? Could, I mean, I. I can't see what they're talking about with our mm. facial similarity. I don't no. know. What I would say is that we both have a fairly strong jawline. That must be it, I think. And yeah. I think like our decent sized lips. But yeah. I think that's I think that's about where it ends. Strong faces. Strong strong manly jawlines. The th- the jawline of Thor. <laughs> Thor line. Uh, that mu- that must be it. But the, look, the pic- the picture. I was perfectly happy. Good with looking. That. Yeah. Good looking. Thank you very much for coming back on the podcast. Champion Thanks, Ed. Thanks a lot. Series eleven hmm. of Taskmaster, Thank with you. the lowest amount of points a champion has ever had. <laughs> on naught, she she had naught points and she still won. Thank you very much, Sarah Kendall. Thanks, guys. <laughs> After you uh, made your philosophical point about uh, the importance of preparation, I'm not sure what you did. My anger started to get directed towards Alex during this time. Rightly, you said, why has this happened? And he said, um, I think it's because it wasn't built very well. No, she didn't build it very well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm amazed you didn't attack him. So, you know, you sit around at lunchtime and you have a nice little chat with Alex at lunch and it's all friendly. Yeah, and, yeah, and then you go out and film and you just get this little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just stunning. A little hairy little bitch. And there we are. Fantastic. Another brilliant series of Taskmaster done. And another very good series of the Taskmaster podcast done. I say done. We're never done. Because as you know, before we did series 11, we were going back through old episodes and we will continue to do that. Next week, we start on series three. I can't believe we're only at series three. It's such a massive undertaking, but what a joy. My job is to watch Taskmaster and talk about Taskmaster, and I will continue to do that job next week. We will have a special guest, hopefully from Series 3, next week. Uh, so come back and join us for that. Until then, all of Taskmasters and all four, watch it again. It stands up to repeat watches, as I'm sure you all know. Buy something from the store, check out the YouTube, just keep being good people. Uh, we will see you again next week, uh, but give a round of applause in your homes. For Alex, for Greg, for the cast of Series 11, and everyone who works on Taskmaster, goodbye! For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!